The score is two to nothing. Team USA over the Soviets. And we're lucky to have uh, Chris Chelios. I didn't know whether or not you'd be able to talk, Chris. You've had as much ice time as Mike Richter and the two blue lines and the referee, but maybe you could give us a bit of a feeling on how the game is going for you and your team. I think we were fortunate to come out on top of the first period. Mike Richter kept us in there, and uh, we really didn't even deserve to be in that period. In the second period, I think we picked it up a little bit, and that second, second goal gave us a little bit of momentum towards the end of the period. So hopefully we can come up with a strong period and hold the, hold the lead. Chris, uh, it, it seems to me watching the games that I've seen so far that when the team starts to hit, when your U.S. team starts to hit, it seems to get everybody up into the game and playing at a little higher tempo. Yeah, I think so. I think what the Russians are trying to do is have a freewheeling game. They like to circle and pick up speed and then pick up the puck in the neutral zone. Fortunately, we're playing in Chicago. It has probably the smallest neutral zone in the rank, in the in the league, and uh, we're able to bottle it up and not give them full speed when they hit our blue line. So that's the key. We've got to be aggressive, and uh, that's the only way we'll be successful. Give me a feeling for some of the young players that the Soviets have out there. Of course, Fedorov you've played against before, but there seems to be some pretty good speed on that team. Yeah, I, the kid with the mask, I can't ever <laughs> remember any of their names, but uh, I think that top one, Semilak, and uh, the kid with the mask, and uh, Fedorov are definitely their speed. But uh, all of them like the crisscross and the blue line. It makes it pretty tough when we start sagging in and, and giving up the blue line. So we've got to... Keep keeping him in the neutral zone and uh, breaking things up there. Is uh, is is it fair to, for me to ask you? And uh, you can decline, obviously, but I would love to have you react a little bit to the uh, to the situation with Doug Wilson that we just we just had happen. Uh, for me, I think it's sad to lose a player. Doug's Doug stature. He's a great person. He's been a great player for the Blackhawks. And I'll never understand the uh, the business part of the the game. And uh, you know, things sometimes things just don't work out. And Mike Keenan and him didn't. Didn't hit it off, and it's sad to see Doug go, but I wish him and his family the best, and hopefully in Chicago we can remain on top like we were last year. I know it's been a busy time, but uh, have you had a chance to talk to Doug? Uh, yeah, I talked to him last night, and uh, right before he took off for San Jose, and uh, I think it's more of a relief for him. He, uh, I don't think he wanted to go through another year of that. Uh, he, like you said, he wasn't having fun, and uh, you know, it's he's speaking for himself, and I think uh, I speak for myself. I. I enjoyed coming here. It was a whole different thing for me. It was a change, and I'd just been traded. So I think I know what Dougie's going through after being traded. I think he just wants to get settled in there and uh, have a new start and maybe uh, help San Jose out. Just skipping back to this particular hockey game for a moment, Chris, uh, it must be a nice feeling to play in front of the hometown fans, you and Jeremy Roenick, uh, in such an important game for your team. Yeah, it's great. I think uh, Jeremy show is showing why uh, you know we, we do favor playing here. Jeremy, he'll tell you he's one of the best homers in the league, and... Uh, He's out there. He made a great play to get us going to, to pass it over to Madonna. And I wish I was 21 years old and had the same enthusiasm <laughs> as him. Right now, I probably look like Mickey Mouse with a big nose here. But. Chris, I appreciate your visit. Thanks, and uh, and good luck in the third period. Okay, thank you, Ed. Chris Chelios, our guest here at the end of the second period. It's 2 to nothing, Team USA. You're watching the Labatt Canada Cup. Soviet Union over two periods, one to nothing at the end of the first period, two to nothing at the end of the second. Finally, the USA gets the power play to work. They do, Jiggs, and of course, when you think about it, it was the hitting and the skating as the team uh, USA started to pick the play up. They brought it up a notch. Soviets started to take penalties, and it was on that penalty that they were able to get their second goal. Some pretty good stops, and you can see all of a sudden the Soviets breaking down. Pat LaFontaine over on the right side is going to move in with a loose puck. Bang. And he's got the quick hands, and he hammers it in. Beautiful play, a timely goal. They had been giving Mike Richter at the other end of the ice some breathing room, and it was that scramble around the net, and Pat LaFontaine hammering it in. Two to nothing, Team USA. The Soviets had what they thought was their first goal. Mike Richter, you see him going to his left. He reached back with his right pad. He seems to have the puck trapped. It's very difficult as Gary Suter moves in. They grab a hold of the puck, usher it out of there. There's the puck, and Suter grabbing it, throwing it over there, get it away from the net. Disputed by the Soviets, obviously. They seem to be somewhat frustrated. Goaltending by Mike Richter. Some calls here by Koharski that haven't gone their way. There's the puck. It went up against the goalpost. You could see Gary Suter reach in with his stick. Now, whether the puck completely crossed the goal line or not, it's very difficult to tell. And at this angle, there's the puck trapped up against the goalpost. And clearly, you could not say that it was a goal from any of the angles. Only the sticks of the Soviet players in the air.